directions. Click on the grid and plot two points. The coordinates of the points must be integers. Point A, right here, is an element of direct variation. Plot two points other than A that are elements of this direct variation. The coordinates of the points must be integers. Okay, please pay attention to what I'm about to do right here. Now, as you remember, direct variation is basically y equals kx, and k is some constant, some number, right? And you should also remember that direct variation also always goes through the origin, 0, 0. So we have 0, 0, and we have 1, 4. We can use those two points to find out what the direct variation is. So if I turn on my calculator, okay, let me get rid of this from before. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit stat, and then I'm going to hit edit. Now, the first point I'm going to plot is my 0, and I have a negative 1 here. Those are my x's. I go over now my y, 0, negative 4. Okay, so my first point is 0, 0, which is the origin. My second point is point A, which is already a graph, negative 1, 4. Now that I have these two plotted, look at what I'm going to do. I'm going to hit my stat key. I'm going to right arrow over to calc, and I'm going to choose option 4 for a linear regression. And then I'm just going to hit, now I'm going to go to store reg EQ, okay? And let me show you why you do this, why you would want to do this. From storage EQ, if I hit my VARS key and I write arrow over to Y VARS, hit function and then hit Y1, what that does, whatever function is calculated here, it's going to store it in my Y1. And then when I go over to my Y1, my stat plot to graph, I don't need to type it over again. It's already going to be there. Well, let me just show you. Now I'm going to hit calculate now that I've stored my value. So it says y equals 4x plus 0, or just simply y equals 4x. So y equals 4x, that is direct variation, right? Now, what happens when I hit y1? I don't need to write that down. See, it already puts it in there for me. Let me clear this here, and let me convert this back. I should have done that previously. I just want to convert this back to regular here. Okay, here we go. I'm going to convert this back. So now I'm going to graph that y equals 4x. And that's the line that I get. Now, if I go over to my table, I'm going to show different points which are on that line that I can graph. Because it says here, plot two points other than a. Okay, so I'm going to go to my table to get other points. So if I hit second table, and lo and behold, I get other points which I can plot. Now, I've copied them and highlighted them over here. So other points I can plot are negative 2, negative 8, negative 1, negative 4, and 2, 8. Because 0, 0 origin, we know that's a point. And negative 1, negative 4 was a point 1, 4. So here are three other points that I can plot. So choose two out of the three other points that you can plot, and that's your list of points, and that is done. Now, again, watch this part again if I went too fast or you did not understand what I did here. Okay? Let's go on to question 28. Which graph has exactly one x-intercept and one y-intercept? Well, that's a giveaway. Here, here's an x-intercept. Here's a y-intercept. Choice B. This one only has a y-intercept. That one only has an x-intercept. That one only has an x-intercept. This has an x and a y. Choice B. Easy peasy. Let's go on to question 29. Which equation best represents this data set? Okay. Easiest way to do this. Go to your calculator, okay, and we're going to plot these points. First thing we're going to do, we're going to hit stat and edit. We're going to punch these points in. First thing I'm going to do is clear my previous data. I go up, hit clear, enter. Go up, hit clear, enter. 
And then what I'm going to do, these first numbers I'm going to punch into L1, which are my X's. The second numbers I'm going to punch into my uh, L2, which are my Y's. So let me begin. So I'm going to do negative 4, enter. Negative 3, enter. Negative 2, enter. Negative 1, enter. 0, enter. 1, enter. So those are all my X values. Now I'm going to punch in my Y's. Negative 4.8, enter. Negative 8.2, enter, negative 9.1, enter, negative 8.1, enter, negative 4.7, enter, 0 0.3, enter. Okay. So now I have my X values entered, my Y values entered. And then we have a choice of four different equations. And it says which equation best represents this data. To find out what, which equation best represents the data, we're going to want to use our correlation coefficient. We need to set it. So in order to set, let me show you a quick way to set your correlation coefficient. If you hit the mode key right here, mode, we want to right arrow down until we get to where it says stat diagnostics. And we want to turn it on. So we hit on and we hit enter. And now our stat diagnostics is on. Okay, now once our stat diagnostics is on, we go back to stat we go to calc, and then we try each one of these and see which one has the correlation coefficient closest to one. If you remember, your teacher should have told you that the correlation coefficient tells you how accurately the data matches your graph. And correlation coefficients range between zero and one. The closer you are to one, the more accurately your data represents the graph. Okay, so Let's try our first one here. Now, we have a squared here, which is a quadratic regression, and we have just a line here, linear regression. So we're going to try linear regression and quadratic regression to see which one gives us the best line. Let's try linear regression first, option four. So if I go with the four and calculate, and just calculate it, it tells us that the line they give us is 1.05x minus 4.1 or 4.2. So it's kind of like minus this. So it looks kind of like C, but what is our coefficient, correlation coefficient? 0.56. That's not really close to one at all. Not at all. So I would not use linear regression. So let's go back to stat. Let's go back to calc and let's go to five quadratic regression since we see a two here quadratic regression. Five quadratic regression and let's calculate that. Quadratic regression. Oh, look at our R squared, our correlation coefficient. 0.998. So that's pretty close to one. So that is what is most accurately depicting our data. So what does it say? So it basically says 1.057, which they just run into 1.1. So that's 1.1 x squared plus 4.2 x minus 4.88 minus 4.9. So 1.1 x squared plus 4.2 x minus 4.9. Well, that's choice B that we have here. All right, so that's how we get the answer for question 29. All right, let's go on question 30. A relationship between X and Y is shown in the table. Which equation represents the relationship? 
Well, we're basically just going to do what we did. Let's just clear our screen. We're going to go back to stat. We're going to go to edit. And we need to clear out this data so we can make room for our new data. So we tab up, hit clear, enter. Go over to L1, tab up, hit clear, enter. Now we're ready to enter new data. Here's our X's, which are going to go into L1. Here are our Y's, which are going to go into L2. So, 0, enter, 1, enter, 2, enter, 3, enter. Move over to L2. So we have 1, 2, 5, and 10. Okay, so our points are entered. Which equation best represents the data? And in our answer choices, we have, again, both linear regression answers and quadratic regression answers. We'll just check them both and see which one gives us the best. So hit stat, right arrow over to calc. We'll try option four, linear regression first. And we'll calculate it, and let's see what it gives us. So it gives us y equals 3x and with a correlation of 0.95. Now, whenever it's linear regression, you're going to use the R because that's just a straight line. However, when it's a quadratic, a quartic, a cubic regression, you're going to use the R squared. 0.958. That's pretty close to 1, but here's the problem. There are no answer choices which say y equals 3x, so we can't use linear regression. That's not going to work. So let's try quadratic regression. Stat, calc, option five, quadratic regression. Let's calculate it. Hit calculate. Oh, R squared is one. It's dead on one. That means that it's an exact fit if you get one exactly. So what is it? It's Y equals X squared, one X squared plus zero X plus one. So X squared plus one. And C, Y equals X squared plus one. That's our answer choice. So that's question 30. All right, let's go on to question 31. Miss Scott will pay $2,000 to have her house painted. The amount each painter earns, A, varies inversely for the number of painters, N, that will paint the house. Which equation best represents this situation? Okay, so you should remember from class inverse variation has a form of y equals k over x. k is the constant, right? I'm just going to simply take this formula and just plug in the variables which we have from this particular question. So it says the amount, the paper on a, so I'm going to substitute a for y, varies inversely for the number of painters n. So I'm going to substitute n for the x. So basically, the amount of paper earns a painter earns varies inversely as the number of painters, right? So the K as our constant, it says $2,000. She's going to pay $2,000. So that's going to be our K. So A equals 2000 over N. And the amount that each painter earns is however many painters there are, right? So if I multiply both sides by N, that's basically going to be A times N equals 2,000. And then choice D matches this, which makes sense that the amount of painter earns is 2,000 times divided by the number of painters. So all we're doing is just manipulating this inverse variation equation, just getting rid of the denominator, multiplying by n on both sides, a of n equals 2,000, or 2,000 equals a n. Choice D. Okay, let's continue. So, the following graph shows a relation. All right. Which of the following best describes the range? Now, remember, domain is X values, range or Y values. So, what are the Y values here? Well, it looks like the Y values, they uh, begin at negative 4, and they just go up from there. So, basically, anything that's greater than or equal to negative 4 is the range of this particular relation. Uh, D, that's our answer choice. Excuse me. All real numbers greater than or equal to negative 4. All right, moving right along. 
Each of these data sets have a mean of 20. Order the sets from the greatest standard deviation to the least standard deviation. Okay. Easiest way you can do something like this. We're going to go back to stat, edit. We're going to clear out this data here so we can make way for new data. All right. Clear this data out. All right. So set one. Let's look at that data. So we have 18, 19, 20, 21, and 22. All right, so that's our data. Now, we want to find out what the standard deviation is. Hit your stat key. We're going to write our over the calc. We're going to choose option one, variable statistics. It's going to give us different information that we need about this data. Option one, variable statistics. And we're going to calculate. So we get the mean, the data set, standard deviation, and all different things. Now, standard deviation on the TI-8384 calculator is denoted by the SX. So S of X, the standard deviation for sample data, 1.58. The sigma x is for population data. We'll get into that at some other time. Right now, you just want to be concerned with the sample standard deviation, s of x. It's 1.58, which I've denoted here. That's for set one. Now, if I go back to stat and edit, set two is all 20. So if I change these all to 20, 20, 20, that one's already 20. Oh. 20. 20. Okay. Now, if I go back to one stat, stat count, one variable statistics, calculate it. My standard deviation is zero, which makes sense because it's not deviating. All the questions are 20. So, yeah, there's no deviation. That makes total sense. Now, let's go to my stat, my set three. We're going to go back to stat, edit. Now I have 16, 18, 20, 21, and 25. All right. Then I'm going to go to stat. Calc, one variable statistics, calculate it. My standard deviation is 3.39, which I've located, well, I've annotated here. So here's the standard deviation for each of the three sets. Now it says order the sets from the greatest standard deviation to the least. Well, the greatest is set three. So I take set three, drag it here. Okay. Uh, the next Greatest is going to be set one. So I'll put set one here. And the least is set two. There's no sense. So set three, set one, set two. Boom, you're done. Okay? Let's move on to question 34. 